Hello students, today we are going to start with the fifth chapter of science that is structure of an atom. Students, can you count this particle? No, we cannot count these particles because they are very very small. So all substances are made up of tiny particles. In 6th century BC, an Indian philosopher named Maharishi Kanat gave us the term Paramanu. Param means smallest. Anu means particle. So, Paramanu means smallest particle. Later on, after him, that is after Maharishi Kanat, many people explained us about this small particle called atom. In the later section of this chapter, we will deal with three important theories put forward in the discovery of an atom by John Dalton, Sir J.J. Thompson and Ernest Rutherford. Let's move on to the world of atom and we will have a look at the evolution of an atom. The first person in the evolution of an atom was in the year 1808, that is John Dalton. So students, let's move on to the world of John Dalton. In the year 1808, an English chemist named John Dalton gave us Dalton's atomic theory. So let's see what is Dalton's atomic theory. Dalton's atomic theory is called the fundamental theory of composition of matter. Fundamental. Fundamental means basic. His theory was the first one and the basic theory. So we call it as the fundamental theory of composition of matter. Matter is made up of small particles which Dalton named as atom. So students now we all know that the Dalton was the first person to tell us about the word atom. According to Dalton's theory, an atom is a hard solid ball that is indivisible. Indivisible means you cannot break it further. It's the final stage students. You cannot break it further. So atom is the final stage. You can't break it further. Now Dalton's theory is not a complete theory. It had some demerits. Demerit means limitations. Let's see what were the demerits or the limitations of Dalton's atomic theory. Dalton's theory does not propose anything about the positive and the negative charge of an atom. Hence, it was not able to explain many of the properties of a substance. So, later on, after Dalton, the second person to continue with the evolution of an atom was in the year 1897 and his name was Sir J.J. Thomson. Sir J.J. Thomson. So, let's move on to the world of Sir J. J. Thomson. In the year 1897, a British physicist, Sir J. J. Thomson, compared an atom to watermelon. He compared atom to a watermelon. Let's see. Thomson's theory proposed that an atom is like a watermelon. According to Thomson, an atom has positively charged particle like the red part of the watermelon the red edible part that we eat, he compared it with the positively charged particle of an atom. Next, he told us that the negatively charged particle of an atom are like the embedded seeds. What is embedded? Embedded means to fix firmly in a surrounding mass. That is, here he is telling us that the electrons are fixed firmly on an atom, like the seeds of the watermelon. So, according to Thomson, Positive charge is like the red edible part and the negative charge is like the black seeds. So students, now let's understand why an atom is neutral. Neutral means no charge. According to Thomson, an atom is electrically neutral because the number of positive and negative charges are equal. Let's take an example and understand this concept better. Suppose that there are six positive charge in an atom. I have an atom. Let's count the number of positive charges. One, two, 
3, 4, 5 and 6. Then according to Thomson, there will be 6 negative charge. Let's count the negative charge now. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6 negative charge. Therefore, according to Thomson, plus 6 minus 6, we all know plus 6 minus 6 is equals to 0, right? So, 0 means neutral. So, therefore, atom as a whole is neutral because number of positive and negative charges are equal. So, the first person to tell us about this equal positive and negative charges was none other than Sir J.J. Thomson. Next, in the evolution of an atom, we had in the year 1911, that is Ernest Rutherford. Let's see what did Ernest Rutherford do. In the year 1911, a Danish physicist, Ernest Rutherford, performed a gold foil experiment. A very important experiment in the discovery of an atom. Let's have a look at the gold foil experiment. Take a source of alpha rays. Now, what are alpha rays? Alpha rays are, they are the beam of positively charged particle. In front of the source, I keep a thin gold foil. There is a gold foil in front of the source of alpha rays. Next, we have a gold foil. What is a gold foil? Gold foil is nothing but thin sheet made up of gold. After that, we surround the gold foil with a screen, keep a screen to detect the alpha rays. The screen will detect the alpha rays. Let's start now the beam of alpha rays from that source, my ray start. The first ray, as you all can see in the picture, the first ray, it passes through the gold sheet. Let's see, let's understand the reason behind this by performing a very, very simple experiment, students. Just imagine that you are standing in front of a fence. Stand near a fence and throw a stone towards the fence. Chalo, we take a stone in our hand and we throw the stone near the fence. The stone passes through the fence to the other side of the fence, right? Why does this happen? Now, there is a lot of empty space between the two planks of a fence, hence the stone passes through the fence. Similarly, in the gold atom, there is a lot of empty space from where my alpha rays were able to pass. Now we understood that like fence, in the atom also there are a lot of empty spaces from which my alpha rays were able to pass. Let's continue. Now, the second ray. As you all can see that the second ray hits the gold sheet and it turns back. Let's see the reason behind this. Again, we are standing in front of a fence. We throw stone towards the fence. What happens? The second stone hits the fence and turns back. Why does this happen? Let's see the reason behind this. This happens because the stone hits the plank and doesn't allow the stone to pass through. The plank, it is not allowing my stone to pass through the fence. Similarly, in my gold atom, there is something which is not allowing my alpha rays to pass. Let's see what it is. Similarly, in the gold atom, there is a positive charge part which turns the positively charged alpha rays. So, let's have a look at the whole experiment now. The first ray passes through, second ray passes through the gold sheet, third ray also passes through. Next, it turns back and last one, it turns back. Majority of the rays, now you can see most of the rays, it passes through the gold sheet. This shows that the part from which the positively charged alpha rays, they turn back, they are very small in size as compared to the empty space. It means there is a lot of empty space in the atom. Because of this, many rays were able to pass through the gold sheet. Only few rays, they turn back because there is some positive charge inside which is turning this positively charged alpha rays back. As we all know, positive positive repulsion. We will learn this in detail in the next section. So, let's have a look. Here I have my alpha particles that is positive particles. 
in front of that i have a gold atom based on this experiment ernest rutherford he proposed his famous theory and in his opinion the fact that most of the alpha particle passes through the gold sheet means atom consist mainly of empty space here you can see most of the rays they pass through the gold sheet because there is empty space in it the path from which the positively charged particle it turns back is very small in size but it is a positively charged particle so alpha rays are positively charged right and nucleus which is in the center is also positively charged therefore positive positive repulsion rutherford's atomic model states that the nucleus at the center of an atom has positive charge positively charged nucleus in the center most of the mass of an atom is concentrated in the nucleus according to rutherford we say that the mass is concentrated in the nucleus because the mass of electron is negligible we will learn this why the mass of an electron is negligible in the later section of this chapter the negatively charged electrons revolve around the nucleus in specific orbit here my electrons are revolving in a specific path that is orbit they are the negatively charged electrons in comparison to the size of an atom the nucleus is very 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 small so in comparison to the nucleus which is at the center the nucleus is very very small to comparison with your whole atom 